So the key thing to look at when you're looking at like preclinical or clinical stage companies that are still still developing immunotherapies or therapies uh, for treatments is to look at their pipeline because their pipeline will give a clear indication of the products that they're going to release in the future. And so on the screen now, as you'll see with Presogen, I've got their clinical pipeline up on the screen. And here is just a breakdown, like I was saying, of like all their products, all the products that they're going to drop in the future that are in development before they become commercialized. And what they will do is they will be submitting uh, at different phases to the FDA in order to get approval. And so as you will see on the screen now, you know, the data here is from January 2023. This is like almost this time last year. And so you'd expect there to be developments with some of these already. So for example, with the type one diabetes one that I've highlighted, you know, that was in phase two in January, 2023. The same with the uh, HPV and solid tumors. It was, uh, again, it's, it was in phase two in January, 2023. And the same with the recurrent respiratory papillomatosis. And so you would expect that these would have, um, made progress like this this year right and so i focused initially on the phase two but then we've also got the phase ones and you'd expect developments with those and so you know over time like i was saying this is the development of the portfolio of their products which will be commercialized and which they will then go on and sell and so one of the things that i really stress is uh like i did with uh, immunity bio in a different video is that these are products are in a work in progress. If we really focus not just on the now, not even on the share price, which fluctuates constantly, but looking, having a forward vision, having a, a forward focus for the next three years, five years, um, and looking at where this company will be in the future once it has developed um, this portfolio of products and services for some what can be considered like life threatening. Um, diseases you know they're working on things for diabetes for for cancer for throat tumors uh, for a whole host of life-threatening diseases and some that are like just like massively inconvenient right and so again it's about really considering how this business changes the world or really impacts the world or brings value to the world that's one of the key things that I always do what is the landscape of uh, the world gonna look like in the next three to five years to ten years how are things gonna change and also, what is the value? What is their gift to the world, if you like? What is the solution to the major problem that they're addressing? And so the next thing that I'm looking at as well is like the personnel or the leadership. Now, I'm going to state the obvious and say that like fundamentally, the business is about the people who run it. But I think it's something that's like massively overlooked in the assessment of a business. Um, you know, people just look at products or they just buy stuff because of hype um, rather than like truly assessing the team or the people that are making uh, key decisions in the, in the company or, or who the people are, what expertise and experience they have. And again, with Presogen, something which in my assessment, you know, looking at the leadership, um, there's really strong leadership there. The president, Helen Sabsavari, you know, from 2008 to 2014, she served as a vice president of immune oncology in another biotech company. Uh, the biotech company was called Merck and during her time at Merck you know she led the company uh, in the discovery and development of a whole host of immunotherapies uh, from treatments from preclinical stage all the way up to being approved by the FDA so again it's this thing of like looking at individuals or team members who have a pr proven track record of de delivering uh, to this kind of standard before so one thing to note is that Helen Sabsavari was at Merck between 2008 and 2014, and currently their share price is at 158 euros. So it just goes to show, you know, with longevity, with patience, with time, and with sincere belief in a um, company or the individuals that lead, what can happen with an initial investment in a small cap stock. Another key member of the team, of the leadership team, is a guy called Randall Kirk. Now he is a billionaire investor. He has a background in investing um, in biotech companies in the past as well. So like I was saying before, you know, this is a proven track record. This is an individual who has come into pharma companies, has floated companies in the past, pharma companies, 
and is again coming back with his expertise, with his contact, with his knowledge, his intimate knowledge of the industry. And again, it's like pedigree speaks for itself, you know. You know, Randall Kirk was on the board of directors of Skios, which was acquired by J&J. &J. He was on the board of directors for Halazine Therapeutics, again, another clinical stage biotech company, and is a member of the board of directors for Zyopharm Oncology, uh, which is listed on the NASDAQ. And so again, he has kind of intimate knowledge um, of working in the biotech industry, and he's also got like a lot of the experience required in terms of acquisitions. You know, he's been there before. He's floated companies, he's floated biotech companies, and he's been involved uh, during the process of selling them as well. I was also like really curious to find out a little bit more about the clinical stage. Who did they have on the clinical team? Um, because again, this is like the area where, you know, you, fundamentally it's all about product. You know, it's about deli delivering world-class products that bring solutions to problems in the world. And this is when I came across Amy Langford, who is head of clinical operations at Presagen. Now, again, looks like she's got a solid track record. I'm looking on LinkedIn. Um, you know, if I scroll down all the way down here, you know, she's worked as a vice president of regulatory affairs, um, preparing submissions to the FDA. Uh, again, you know, looking at therapeutic development at Trovis Pharmaceuticals, uh, pharmaceutical science with experience in management, coordination and strategic planning of phase one to phase three clinical trials again. And so fundamentally, again, it's just like looking at the individuals and I kind of <clears throat> gone over this a little bit briefly and I would kind of encourage you to take a little bit more of a look at some of the other team members as well. And again, what you'll find is that the share price for Presogen has fluctuated quite a lot. It's a low cap um, market stock, which is what you would expect. But like one of the key things that I stress, and I mentioned this before with Immunity Bio, is that people buy on the news. So they will buy once uh, things have been approved. So going back to the pipeline, you know, you're looking at the pipeline where they have a number of uh, phase two um, clinical trials, which are dated from this time last year. You know, it's about anticipating that there is going to be news coming up um, in the future, maybe within six months, maybe within a year. I'm not too sure. I'm not really, I don't have insight into the timelines, but certainly they, they will be far more ahead now than they were this time last year. And when they do announce things through press releases, uh, this is when people are going to buy it. And like I was saying, you know, the share price for Immunity Bio skyrocketed and you'll see this in a different video. I bought it at like a dollar, but like 1.3 uh, USD. And at the time of this video is at the high $3 to $4 mark, um, which just goes to show, you know, if you can anticipate things before the crowd, if you can buy things before the news, hold on to them in the sincere belief that things are going to happen because they have great people uh, with the expertise, with the experience, with the uh, proven track record of the past, who are intimately involved, who are serious people, you know, you have to kind of like hedge your bets on those kind of individuals. But yeah, as you can see on the screen now, you know, um, the price fluctuates heavily uh, based on news. You know, around 2021, for example, that would have been around the COVID time and the price was at $10. Now that there's no news and there's nothing really been happening, um, the price is at like $1.19. And I would say that this is like a very good price to buy, bearing in mind that over the next five to 10 years, you know, with the pipeline in mind, they are going to have a full pipeline of products to sell. Uh, they will be ripe for acquisition. You know, you have Randall Kirk, who's been involved in acquisitions and sales before. You have uh, Helen Sabsavari, who has been intimately involved in the development of preclinical clinical, uh, therapies. And it needs to be less about like constantly checking the share price or selling because you've lost patience or selling because the price is um, tanked and you're selling because everyone else is selling or selling b because there's bad news, you know. Uh, that's when I've bought. And one of the things that I've discovered over the duration of doing this is that I will put in like lump sums um, with some of these companies, but then over time I will, as the price fluctuates up and down, you know, I will continuously trick, trickle money in because I'm looking to over a long period of time, you know, when there's bad news, when there's a, an, some FDA feedback and uh, an application has been rejected, for example, which is a normal thing. You know, we're all human, we make errors, we make mistakes. 
And it's about assessing that kind of thing and not panicking, but realizing, oh, okay, this is kind of part of the process. You know, human error does happen. But how are these people going to respond to it? Okay, they're going to take the feedback. They're going to sit around the table with the FDA, discuss what needs to be tweaked, what needs to be changed, what needs to be adapted before resubmitting perhaps three months later, four months later, or that kind of thing. And it's in those moments that I will like look at um, a share price, for example, for a share, for a company that I believe in, that I believe in the value that they're bringing, I believe in the individuals, I believe in the team, and I will increase my shareholding knowing that over the long term period, you know, they're working towards an acquisition, they're working towards being bought out by a J and J, a Pfizer or something like this. So if you're new to investing and you want to get into small cap stocks, the best thing to do is to sign up to interactive brokers. That's pretty much where I get access to all micro cap and small cap stocks. They're very hard to find on other platforms. You can't get access to these on platforms like Hargreaves or Lansdowne. And so take a look at my channel because there are loads of like how to's on interactive brokers to give you like very simple, very short step-by-step -step tutorials so that you can get the best out of interactive brokers, whether you're dollar cost averaging uh, or anything like that. And have a look at some of my other videos. All my videos are focused on micro cap or small cap stocks that I think have the potential to be multi-baggers or a hundred baggers. Uh, I've looked at the cannabis industry. I've looked at uh, the immunotherapy uh, industry and a whole host of others as well. So have a look at those and I'll be more in the future. But look, thanks very much for watching. Have a great day and catch you soon. All the best.